Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about circles and their circumference. So there are a few different parts of a circle that I want us to start becoming familiar with. Um, so here you can see this is a circle and this dot in the middle is called the center. So this is actually the point that we use to um, name our uh, circle. So um, a few different special segments within a circle, one is called a radius. So the radius is just a line from the center out to the edge of your circle. Another is called a diameter. A diameter is a line that goes through your center and hits two uh, sides of your circle, but it has to go through your center. Now a chord is any line that hits two parts of your circle. So this could be a chord, but any diameter could also be a chord. A chord does not have to go through the center. A diameter must go through the center. And then two more um, line segments. A secant line is a line that goes through the circle, so it touches two parts, but it keeps going. Notice that the chord stops. Its endpoints are on the circle while the secant line keeps going. And then a tangent is a line that comes on the outside of your circle and touches it at one point, but keeps going. All right, let's start by practicing naming a few different parts of this circle. So the first thing that I would like us to try is to name the circle. So remember the circle is always named based on the center. So we could call this circle K. And another way that we could write this we can make a symbol with a dot signifying the center, and we could say circle K like this. Now name one radius. So there's actually a lot of radii we could name. Anything that goes from the center out to the edge. So we could say KO, we could say KN, KR, KP, or KQ. Those are all radii, anything from the center out to the edge. Now name one diameter. So remember, a diameter must um, touch two parts of your circle, but it also has to go through the center. So there's only one diameter here, and that's RP. And then name one chord. So um, NO is a chord that we could name because it has two endpoints on uh, our circle. But we could also say that RP is a chord. So RP is both a chord and a diameter. Either one will work. OK, now let's talk about the relationship between um, radii and diameters. Radii is just the plural of radius. So it says all radii of a circle have the same length. So a circle can have many, many, many radii, and the length is always going to be the same. All diameters of a circle also have the same length. And then uh, one really important thing to note is that the diameter is twice as long as the radius. Um, so you could say that D equals 2 times R, or you could think of it as that the radius is half the size of your diameter. So the radius equals 1 half times your diameter. So let's try to use those two statements to help us find some different lengths. So in this uh, circle A, so this is implying that A is the center. They say DF is 10. So DF is this entire distance. So it's from here all the way to here. So DF is a uh, diameter. So they would like us to find DA, which is this distance from here to here. So I know that the diameter is twice as long as the radius. So DA is going to be 5. The entire thing is 10, so half of that is 5. Here they tell us that AG is 12. So if AG is 12, they would like us to find LA. Well, I know that all radii are equal distance. So we can say that LA is also 12 because AG is a radius and LA is a radius. So they are going to be equal distance. OK, go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try. Okay, so uh, for the first one, I can see that PA is a radius, and I can see that PG is a diameter. So I know that the diameters are always twice as long as the radius. So 7 times 2 is 14. Uh, for the second one, this is a diameter, and I can see that AF from here to here is a radius. 
So the radius is always going to be half the size, so 16 divided by 2 is 8. All right, so now let's try to continue applying what we know about diameters and radii and um, see if we can figure out this problem. So here we have three circles that are overlapping at various points, and they tell us that the diameter of circles A, B, and C are 10, 20, and 14, respectively. Now this word just means that the order that they listed the first three things goes with the order of the second three things. So what they're really telling us is that the diameter of circle A is 10, and that circle B is 20, and that the diameter of circle C is 14. So that's what respectively means. Match first with first, second with second, and third with third. Now here they would like us to find XB. So we're trying to find this segment that I'm coloring red. So we have to first strategize and find a way to find this segment. So I notice that I can use a little bit of segment addition or subtraction. So let's imagine I take this entire distance from AB, and then I could take away this distance from AX, and what I would have left is XB. So I can make a little equation. I can say XB equals AB, that entire blue segment, minus AX, that green part that we don't want included. Now we have to figure out, well, what is the length of AB and what is the length of um, AX? So I notice that AB is the radius of circle B. So if I know that the diameter of circle B is 10, I know that the rate, or 20, the radius is 10. Now I know that um, AX right here is actually the radius of circle A. And I know that the diameter of circle A is 10, which means the radius is 5. So I can find XB by doing the radius of B, which is 10, minus the radius of A, which is 5. So XB equals 5. All right, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can give this one a try. It's the same idea, except now you're finding BY. All right, so remember this time we're finding this small segment right here. So I can find that by doing this larger segment, BC, and taking away the portion I don't want, YC. So let's have, set up an equation. B, I know that BY is going to be BC minus YC. So now I need to figure out what those two distances are. So I know that BC is going to be 10. It's going to be half of 20. And I know that YC is actually going to be half of 14. So I know that YC is 7. So I can substitute those values into our equation. And I can see that uh, BY is equal to 3. All right, um, now I want to talk about um, a specific measurement within a circle, which is called the circumference. So the circumference of a circle is the distance around the outside of the circle. So imagine like you took a st string and you traced it around your circle and then you measured that distance of your string. That's what's called the circumference. So there's a formula that we can use. It's C equals 2 times pi times r, um, where r is the radius, and pi is a Greek letter. We read it pi, p-i. Um, it stands, it represents the number that is roughly 3.14. Your calculator has a pi button, but if it, done, if it didn't, we can use the decimal approximation 3.14. So this is just a, um, a variable to represent a specific number, 3.14. So we can do 2 times pi times our radius, but since we have 2 times our radius, we could also write that as pi times our diameter because 2 times the radius is the diameter. So if you multiply those together, that will give you the distance around the outside of your circle. So let's give a few of these a try. They would like us to find the circumference if r equals 7. So we can say c equals 2 times pi times r 
That's our formula. So C equals 2 times pi times 7. So we can say 14 pi. Now we can leave our answer like this, or you can plug this into your calculator and get a decimal approximation. But let's leave it exact for now. Find C if uh, D equals 32. So we can say for this one, we're given the diameter. So we can just say pi times the diameter. So C equals pi times 32 which we will just leave as 32 times pi. That's an exact answer. It, it allows us to avoid having to round. Now here, they would like us to find D and R if our circumference is uh, 136. So we can say C equals pi times D. So I'll substitute C with 136. So there we go. And then I'm solving for D. So I can solve for D by dividing both sides by pi. So D equals 136 over pi. And I can do that same thing for our uh, radius. I could say C equals 2 times pi times R. 136 equals 2 times pi times R. And I could divide both sides by 2 pi. So R equals 136 divided by 2 pi. Now we do need to simplify that um, because I see that I can do 136 divided by 2. So we can say that r is 68, let me zoom out, divided by pi. So there's, we still have pi in our denominator and that's okay. All right, go ahead and pause the video and give this problem a try. All right, let's go ahead and check your work. So for the first one, it's just C equals pi times D, so C equals 15 pi. And then here we have 2 times pi times R, so 18 pi. And then here we are given the circumference, so I can use this formula to find D. I just divide both sides by pi. And I can use this formula to find R, so I divide both sides by 2 pi. Here you can't simplify because 55 is not divisible by 2. All right, let's try this one challenge problem. So here they would like us to find the diameter or the, the circumference of circle P. So I know that for, to find my circumference, I either need to know my radius or my diameter. But I see here that I can find the radius. So if I look at just this triangle, I notice that I have a right triangle. And I know that I can find this distance using the Pythagorean theorem. So I can say 5 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. And if you add up 5 squared and 12 squared, you get 169 equals c squared. And then if you take the square root of both sides, you get c equals 13. So I can see that this distance, uh, which is the hypotenuse of our triangle, it's also going to be the diameter of our circle. So the diameter is 13. So to find the circumference, I can just do pi times d. So our circumference is 13 pi, and then I do see units in this one, so I'm going to say centimeters. All right, that is all for today's lesson. Thank you so much for watching.